How cold is it there? Um, you know, it's not horribly cold. Like it was way colder in January, and I had like a. I was super fortunate. It was really warm this week, but the last two days have been pretty cold. Where it's just it's cold, but it's not miserably cold. But it's just cold, you know. But in January, it's like miserably cold. You're like, oh my god, you know, you can't function. But it, it was. It's pretty chilly the last two days. She is an idiot. She is. Yeah, she's not the smartest, since she oh, was questioning it, notarized documents. I'm not saying. It's like you can make mistakes, and you can maybe not understand how no, how to, how how, how, how notary how works. works. <laughs> you can make, that's okay. I'm not saying you're dumb because of that. I'm not saying you're undone. What I'm saying is, she's the one who doesn't know that shit, and then goes around and just fucking make it. Yeah, like hey, yeah. Oh, oh, I, I have a something for LCW. This is what my teacher used to say. And, okay, so when I went to the private school. I had like the same teacher for like five years. <laughs> There's one teacher who he meant the world to me. Like he's passed away now. He was old. he was old when he was a teacher. His name was Tom Bray. Yeah, I, he was like a dad to me because you know my dad. But his favorite saying was, "It's better to appear to be a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt." <laughs> LCW fell right into that one. Yep, that was his favorite thing to say. Because it made you that, that's when I realized you're pretty dumb when you didn't realize that a notary public is the one who authorizes that signature. I mean, a baby, yeah, a, 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 also, baby. Gloria uh, has a tendency to sometimes hand like sometimes uh, print, print. print when it says signature, and then sometimes she signs because she signs in cursive and then she prints sometimes, but sometimes she gets confused if they want her to print or sign. She, you know, Gloria, she's not. She doesn't always understand things. Yeah. She she really struggles with. She still thinks in Spanish always. So like, when things are said to her in English, she still struggles. Even though she's been in America forever, her brain still thinks in Spanish. So if people talk to her in Spanish, I think she wouldn't struggle as much. But I think when things are said in English, she's still because sometimes she still says what is the word for things and stuff like because I, her brain is still thinking in Spanish. So when she has to go to English like she sits all day watching novellas and stuff in Spanish and so things like if they tell her to sign she might print you know it's like but if they said it in Spanish it'd probably be no problem for things with her you know yeah. what I mean it, I think it's just still always a little bit of a language barrier for her, which is interesting because she's been in America forever but she really is not adapted to English she prefers Spanish she prefers to, like, she would love if we all spoke Spanish, but she never taught any of us Spanish. I mean, if she taught Spanish, we probably would. But, um, yeah, it's just, that's so, I think that's where a lot of, sometimes a miscommunication occurs with Gloria. Because she, her brain is think. oh, wow, is this an eight-hour blog again? Wow, I just looked at that. Um, yeah, her brain still thinks it's Spanish. Oh, my gosh, you guys, I had a crazy day. So, I went to Roslyn, Long Island. And to hunt, hunt, hun, Huntington, 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 <laughs> like Huntington beaches. But um, I spent five hours in Ubers today. Luckily, I didn't pay for them because one of the Ubers was $175 one way. But get this, Roslyn, um, Long Island is the highest taxes of any place in the entire world. So what that means is like the wealthiest place in the world because the people that live there have so much all of the houses are mansions uh pretty much <laughs> when you drive around and they're all like colonial mansions so like george washington <laughs> used to be out in roslyn um long island so i went there and i went to this really really cool old hotel like a colonial hotel like it, it it's so unique and they're saying that it's actually the hotel is struggling because like it's the the structure of it is collapsing because the the ground because it's right by the water the ground is starting to deteriorate because it's getting so old that they're having to like put like stilts and stuff for the building to keep it up. But um, yeah, it was really interesting, but I, I got really tired. And so when I got home, I was super irritable um, and I hadn't eaten all day. I didn't have food or water all day because I got up. I left the Manhattan at 6 59 AM, 7 AM. And I didn't get back till five 30, except for to pop in for like a half hour to change my clothes, to go to another call. But it was like, so, um, and at that time, I guess I didn't even drink any water. I should have, but I didn't have any food. All I had was two buns from a burger, which I would never eat. <laughs> and Andrew just left here because I don't eat the buns. I eat the burgers. So the buns were the only, literally the only food in my room was two buns. <laughs> and I sat out all day. Uh, I sat out in the day before. So I was exhausted. And oh my God, what Richard got me was the best food I've ever had. That steak, whoever helped, you guys are, he said you guys are helping. Oh, yeah, it was amazing because I didn't have a knife. 
but it just it just shredded like 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 pulled pork you know it was just like oh mm. so i scarfed down three burgers and a steak when i got home in like 10 minutes i was like oh i was so and then i finally my psyche got to get a little better because when i don't eat which was not intentional i was working all day it was not intentional to not eat um i get irritable <laughs> And so I came home in a really bad mood. And then when I saw them back in the grocery store, I was like, why the hell are you going to do it back in the grocery store again? <laughs> but then Richard explained to me, you know, they, you know, they went to the food bank, but that stuff's garbage. So, but I kind of lost it. I was like, I better not come on scope. So I'm glad I didn't come on because I would have been ranting. And then I had to calm myself down and eat and realize I was just being irritable. So it's, um, it's not a greed thing ever, like with me, because I am very generous. But it is that I don't like waste. I don't like when people waste. Like it's just I just I'm, I'm very um, I am a minimalist, and I think you know there's a limit of it about resources in the universe, and especially on Earth. Um, and when I feel that I, it's not just with Gloria, I don't think that people should be super wealthy. I don't think people should have billions or millions of dollars. I think it should be more like everyone is kind of more equal. I'm just not for like one person having way more than another. And also I don't think one person should waste. And it's a little bit hypocritical, I know, because I was wasteful when I was bulimic, but I'm not bulimic anymore. And I never felt comfortable that I was being wasteful when I was bulimic. That was the big thing that I really had an issue with, but that I, I, it was a bad addiction that I was wrapped into. And now I'm not in that addiction. But when I, people just waste, I, it really frustrates me because it's just like, why? You know what I mean? And it's not a money thing, which is always like, oh, it's, it's, like it's not a money thing. It's not even, it's like $2. It's just like, why waste? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm part Native American. So like the concept of like wasting resources really like kind of like hurts my soul. Like it's just, it's just not in my nature. Like I said, when I was being bulimic, that was part of my issue with myself when I was being bulimic is I didn't like being wasteful because I'm a total minimalist and so um but sometimes I have to realize that it's not that important to get upset over stupid food or something <laughs> you know I don't really matter but I just my issue with Gloria is that we are very different in she has no problem wasting like she does that doesn't bother her so but I just have to be like, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? And not get worked up about it. But so I had to calm myself down because I was just worked up from being really tired all day. I, were, I was in the Uber for five hours today because uh, my first appointment was an hour each way to Long Island. And my second appointment was an hour and a half each way. So by the time I got home, I was just exhausted and tired. I hadn't had water or food um, all day. Because I said I left at 7 a.m., thinking back to 5 30, except for to pop in for about a half hour to get ready. And I didn't even think drink water when I popped in. I, I don't know why I had water here. I just didn't, I was just so busy. So I came back, I quickly like uh, rinsed off and I took off my makeup and put on, because I can't put makeup on top of makeup. That's horrible. You know, I have like the allergy to makeup. If I do that, it's oh God. So I had to take my makeup off, put on new makeup, get changed and stuff. And I just didn't even think about drinking water. So uh, by the time I was home, I was dehydrated. When I peed, it was like yellow, you know, just like not good. Um, and I was just in a really bad mood. So I was like, I'm not going on live. I don't feel like it. <laughs> also, you guys, I deal, I dealt with a really big deal thing today is um, the client I saw, I wasn't going to see him because he's a partier, like a huge partier. And he had wanted to see me earlier in the week. And I said, no, but he's a good friend of mine. I've seen him a ton of times. He's a, he's a good friend of me and Richard's now. And I, I felt bad because he really wanted to see me. But I was like, dude, I don't, I just, I'm sober now. And he's like, you know what? That's fine. You can come over being sober. But I was like, but he didn't understand. Like the issue is it's really hard for me to be around him when he's part he was partying the entire time did right you do? How did, that, did you did you were you able to not not partake i mean oh of like, course and yeah. i'm gonna prove it to you guys yeah. when i come home which I, honestly you guys helped me because part of me wants to be like ha, i did not do anything and like prove it to you guys yeah you but use it all, as, a, as a motivation that, to keep you sober, yeah right? it was but yeah, also yeah. the Whatever other motivation takes, was man. i had a second call so that if i partied i would have effed off the second call and we can't afford that and also, I didn't want to be, like, unhappy for the rest of my trip, like, craving 
cocaine basically for the rest of the trip, which is what happens if you do that. Um, And instead, it's probably why I was a little irritable too, because, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I did a lot and I refrained from a lot today. And then I'm like, you know, I was kind of like a little bit feeling you were jealous a high, and, high and mighty a little bit, you, you know, and then like, what the hell are you? you had to yeah. And then when I hear Glory's getting Bailey's, I'm like, what the hell, you know, it's just kind of, yeah, thing I had a little bit to be sober. Yeah. So I'd be sober to get Bailey's, you know, I was kind of, but also Bailey's some high sugar. So I was like, Oh geez. That's but what I, it is being the boss, man. The boss yeah. don't get the party. I know. So I was just feeling yeah. a little bit, ir- but I feel proud of myself. I feel really proud of myself. I haven't been bulimic. I haven't drank and I haven't done any drugs in New York. And I feel really proud of myself about that because it's really hard here. Like I've never felt so much uh, pull to drink like in the last several years as I do here. Like, cause there's just alcohol everywhere and I'm not doing it. And then the I feel proud of myself. Yeah. And there's like all these bars, not that I would go to a bar. It's just like the energy of the bar. You know, you go, you get, Oh, you remember that? I can't even imagine me sitting in a bar at my age. Oh my gosh. I mean, not that I, people at my age do. I'm just saying of my mentality now, like I used to live in bars. But like now, I can't even imagine sitting in a bar. Like I just, I just, I just can't even imagine that. I, I would feel so <laughs> weird. I don't know. It's just so different than the way I've lived for the last twelve. Years. I don't think I've been in a bar in twelve years, though, Richard. Have we ever gone to a bar? Not. Oh, not since we were in Portland. No, we went. We went to the strip clubs, and we had drinks there. Oh, 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 oh! In in twenty sixteen, one 20, time. No, was it twenty fifth? Twenty sixteen. Twenty. 15 or 20, 2016. I think it's 2016. One time. Oh, Mark, wasn't it March 2016? Was the one when we drank? Yeah, probably so. Yeah, sounds about right. And then we went to a Crazy Horse. We paid a hundred dollars to get in, and then we Horse. left. And we paid a hundred. They charged us again. We thought we'd get to go in. And here was the deal: why we went back in because there was a, a guy there that we wanted to get cocaine. All right. Yeah. Up, and so we had no paying. He became our dealer forever. Though, get this: his father is Al Green. I'll agree, the singer. Our da- our, our yeah. dealer for many take years. Me to the river. Yeah, take me to the river. His father is Al Green. Drop and it's not telling water. anything. He has like 23 kids. Al Green has like 23 kids. So you're not going to figure out who it is. Well, he tells everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. But Al Green has like 23 he... children. Did you know no, Rich? No, Something no, like that? No, but Something Green, ridiculous has, like that. A, he has a channel on YouTube. Our guy. Yeah. But you'll never find him because he doesn't go by his real name. Like he, his real name that you could, if you ever looked at, you know, Al Green's children's music, have a lot. This person doesn't go by his real name. I know his real name, but you would never find his, he goes by his rapper name. He's a rapper. Yeah. Yeah. So well, he goes by his rapper. It, it doesn't rapper matter name. if you met, met, met one of his kids, even if he had 30, that's still 30, 30 kids. <laughs> I think he had like 23 or something. I think he, yeah. um, oh, I almost said it. Oh. But still, you I'll got say his name. He has 30 people. I almost said his name. Um, but yeah, he uh, he said that, you know, he, he it, it's tough. Like, he's not super close to his dad because his dad was a huge partier. I don't know if you know about Al Green. Al Green was, that's why he has so many kids. He was knocking up ladies. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but um, no, but I think the guy's really cool. The guy has the best style ever. Oh my God, the, our, our dealer, he, he has never yeah, worn, we've right. never worn, no, he's not a dealer anymore, obviously, but um, Someone, he's never he's worn happy. the same thing that we've ever seen him in in all the years we had ever seen him. Have you ever seen, I gotta keep almost saying his name, I don't wanna say his name, but uh, Richard, have you ever seen him wear the same hat, the same anything, the same glasses? I haven't <laughs> seen him wear the same glasses before. I mean, it's like, no, I mean, day, every, you know, every, seen, every time you ever see him, see he has a different outfit. Yeah, every day we would see him for like a year, probably. Never, ever wore the same outfit. The guy's all about fashion. Yeah. And we were were not. (laughs) So it was like, we're like, we're the same thing over and over. He's like, I never. And he had, I remember one time he came to our place, he had just got his new Mercedes because he was seeing us because we were huge clients. We bought him his Mercedes for sure. We saw him every single day. the sprinklers went off at our apartments and yeah. got his, Mercedes. oh God, he lost it. He was out there for like an hour uh, wiping off his Mercedes. So, <laughs> God damn it. He was so good. <laughs> it's, it's not a holiday. She's working, bro. She's working. Oh yeah. This is no, ho- are you kidding? I worked my ass off today. <sighs> Jesus. Oh my God. And I have to work tonight too. I'm not done. That's why I was going to rest for a couple of minutes. That's why I was pissed off because I was just like, 
It's working my ass off, and then it's like I felt like I, it's not the case, but I was feeling like Glory was buying more food. That was I'm like, good God, how much food does she need for her today? So I was feeling a little bit like, like a little bit disrespected of like all this work I do, and then you're just wasting it. But it, I was a little bit overreacting. Yeah. So I calmed myself down. After texting Richard a bunch of shit, pissed off. Like, ah, nah, 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 nah. like, I decided not to come on live so that everyone doesn't call me maniacal and shit all day long. So I, I well, vented little, to Richard. You are a little bit manic, you know. I mean, that, that, I don't think that's a secret. No, I mean my family is all manic depressive. So, so. Yeah, you guys are. You guys are very. No, manic. literally. All like 